There are many drummers that cite Neil Peart as a huge influence on their playing. You have drummers like Mike Portnoy, who is famously or infamously a huge Neil Peart fan and his friends with him. We have Chad Smith, Denny Carey, Dave Grohl, Taylor Hawkins. The list goes on. Many, many drummers have cited Neil Peart as a huge influence on them. Then when you start listening to their drumming, you don't hear Neil Peart in there. <laughs> you may. I mean, there may be some instances where maybe you listen to Mike Portnoy's drumming and you may hear some Neil Peart in there, but you start listening and you have a hard time finding out or hearing what is the influence. You think these are great drummers and no drummer really at that level wants to sound like another drummer. They don't even want to sound like the drummer that has influenced them so much. But at the same time, you start to think, you start to wonder, well, where is the influence? Why don't I hear it? It may surprise you to find out that you're probably not going to hear it, but it's very, very subtle a lot of the time. And many times, these drummers, over time, their playing will evolve, but that influence is still there, but in a subtle way. There are a few exceptions where it's kind of obvious where the drummer will just pluck a particular signature pattern or signature motif of their favorite drummer and just slap it right in there. Here's an example of Taylor Hawkins doing just that. And there we saw Neil Peart's, or heard, Neil Peart's signature ride pattern. He put that in, obviously, in that song, Rope, uh, in the Foo Fighters. Now, many of us have been wanting to see, well, where's, you know, I would like to see how these drummers were influenced by Neil. Where specifically? What song? What part of the song? You know, what I'd like for you guys to do, if you have heard these influences, these specific patterns in certain songs, go ahead and put them in the comments section as to where you've seen it and where you've heard it. I personally don't see it that often, but I know it's out there. So what I'd like to do is to put my experience as Neil Peart influencing me in a song that's completely different from anything that sounds like progressive rock. But when you listen to it, you can see that Neil Peart has influenced me. So I'm going to put myself out there as an example as to how Neil Peart influenced me to play a song a particular way. It's a cover song. The song is called Bad Moon Rising by Creedence Clearwater Revival. And the original drummer of CCR played it a certain way. But when I covered it with the band I was playing with, Neil Peart is all over it. <laughs> uh, he, he's all over it. And I'm going to specify how. And to the layman or to someone who just likes the song, they might think it's oh, this is a nice little variation. But the way I played it, there's a particular song by Rush that completely influenced the way I played Bad Moon Rising. Believe it or not, the song that has completely influenced my playing of that song by Creedence Clearwater Revival is Distant Early Warning. How the heck are these songs any, sim any way similar? Well, you'll see how that song from Neil Peart influenced the way I played it. And I will specify where the influence is. And then that may be something that if you're a drummer, you can use that to influence how you play. And it may not be obvious to a lot of people, but maybe to those who are drumming discerning, uh, they may catch it. So here we go. So let's start off with the influencer. That would be the song that influenced the way I played Bad Moon Rising. We're gonna start off with Distant Early Warning. I'm gonna play for you the part that influenced me the way I played that CCR song. The part that is more specific to, the, to this particular influence is the chorus. The way the chorus of Distant Early Warning influenced the way I played the chorus in Bad Moon Rising. We know famously that Neil Peart does not like to play the same thing twice when that same motif comes back. So in Distant Early Warning, I think there's about three times that the chorus is sung. I want you to notice how Neil plays during the first chorus, how he plays during the second chorus, and then how he plays during the third chorus. So here we see during the first chorus, while Getty is singing, the world weighs on my shoulders and then the rest of the chorus, he's playing on the hi-hats. He's hitting the notes on the hi-hats and he's opening them up during a couple of beats. So he's playing a particular pattern during this first chorus. Now let's skip to the second chorus, the second time the chorus is sung, and you'll see that 
instead of Neil playing on the hi-hats, he's playing the ride cymbal. Just straight notes on the ride cymbal. So he varied it up from the time, from the first time the chorus was sung. Now, if we go to the third time the chorus is sung, we'll see that Neil Peart is playing the ride cymbal, but accenting the China cymbal twice during each bar. So he'll hit the ride cymbal and twice on the China cymbal. That's the variation he uses the third time the chorus is sung. So we see that in typical fashion, Neil not being able to play the same way when that motif comes back, when the chorus comes back. Typically you'll hear drummers, they'll maybe ride the ride, the ride cymbal during the chorus, whereas Neil chose to play it three different ways the three times that the chorus came up. Now we see me and the band here covering Bad Moon Rising. The chorus is sung four times in this song. I'm gonna start playing or showing here the first time the chorus comes up and you'll see me sloshing the hi-hats. That, you know, when you open the hi-hat a little bit, sounds kind of sloshy. That's the way I chose to play during the first time the chorus is sung. Now if we go to the second time the chorus is sung, I'm writing the right symbol. So I'm doing it differently from the way I did it the first time in typical Neil Peart fashion. And the third time it comes up, I'll put that up, I'm writing the right symbol again because I know that there's gonna be the final chorus that ends the song. And this time I'm gonna be writing the crash symbol. So it kind of like is uh, accentuating the noise, bringing it up to a level where it's kind of coming to a conclusion. So that's the way I chose to use this influence of Neil where he doesn't play the same thing twice. I chose also not to play the same thing twice where the first time the chorus came, I'm sloshing the hi-hats. Second time I'm writing the cymbal. The third time I'm also writing the cymbal because I know on the last time the chorus comes up, I'm gonna be writing the crash cymbal. And that way the song is a little more interesting. At least it's more entertaining for me, the drummer makes it more interesting and I'm not as bored instead of just playing maybe the ride cymbal each time the chorus comes up. So that's just one way Neil Peart has influenced my drumming and there's a bunch of other ways that he has as well. If you like this kind of topic, if you like this kind of discussion, please let me know in the comments that you'd like to see more of this and I'll try to come up with other videos that have a similar motif as Neil used to say. And don't forget to check out the videos that appear at the end of this video as well. We'll see you in the next video.